If you're like me, then when Electronic Arts announced that they were remaking Dead Space, you had a brief moment of mild excitement before realizing that, like most other remakes, they'd probably update the game's political messaging to conform to today's standards. Well, the remake is out now, and I've played it in my spare time here and there, so I wanted to share my thoughts on the changes made to it. For those unfamiliar, Dead Space was a sci-fi horror video game released in 2008 for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. You play as Isaac Clark, an engineer sent on a mission to repair the USG Ishimura, a corporate mining vessel that sent out an SOS before its communications went dark. Long story short, the crew found an alien artifact that turned them all into violent monsters, and Isaac has to fight to survive and ensure these monsters don't make it back to Earth. To be honest, the story was never all that great, but that was okay because the story was mostly there to service the gameplay and the atmosphere, which were always Dead Space's strong points. Graphically and mechanically, the remake looks and feels fantastic. It's been completely rebuilt from the ground up using the Frostbite engine, which is a rather remarkable upgrade to the Tiger Woods PGA Tour engine the original was built on. There are some hitching issues when loading in new sections of the map, but they're somewhat minor depending on several factors. Regardless, within the first five minutes, you'll notice some alterations. Nicole, Isaac's girlfriend, who is stranded on the Ishimura, is still a blonde woman, but she's much older and more haggard looking now. People have argued here that this is because the actress herself has simply aged. There's some truth to this, but I don't think it's the full story. Now, bear with me for a moment because I'm about to get real autistic. The original actress was, oddly enough, a Mexican woman, which speaks to how in 2008, it was entirely acceptable for developers to retain a Nordic phenotype from storyboarding, even if the actress who ended up being cast wasn't white. The developers did not feel the need to conform the physical appearance of the character to the actress, which, appears to be somewhat of a norm today. There's also an emergent trend in game development today to render female characters less attractive. Look at the recent example of Horizon Zero Dawn, whose character Aloy had a much wider face in the sequel than she did in the original. In fact, looking at her real life Dutch model, I might even argue the original modeling made her somewhat less attractive by widening her lower jaw and overall dialing back her femininity. This is what I think the developers of the Dead Space remake did to Tanya Clark's in-game model. There's also the consideration that, if the devs wanted to, they easily could have de-aged her. There wasn't some facet of motion capture that forced them to include her wrinkles. Speaking of which, Isaac Clark's in-game model actually looks younger than that in the original. And comparing the actor to the in-game model, it seems they actually got rid of his wrinkles and even got rid of his receding hairline. There's also the fact that Kendra Daniels, another female character in Dead Space, now has much smaller breasts, a flattened butt, and is overall much older and less attractive as well. Just compare some recent footage of the actress to her in-game model, and it seems readily apparent to me that the developers made these changes on purpose. Now to be clear, I'm not complaining that my video game isn't full of boobies and hot women. In fact, I think the whole Instagram filter phenomenon is cancer, and young women today have my sympathies in terms of how these things might affect their self-esteem. What bothers me here is this emergent resentment that certain people in game development have toward the beautiful, and their insistence on destroying it to make themselves feel better. This attitude actually reaches far beyond the realm of video games, but that topic is beyond the scope of this video. Getting back to Kendra Daniels, they also changed her dialogue so that now she mentions she has a girlfriend. That's her? Nicole? Yeah. First I've heard from her in weeks. We're five minutes out, you still got that thing on repeat? Guess you really miss her. Bishamer is not a job you turn down, but six months apart with only fit calls? It's rough. Easy to say the wrong thing. I don't blame you. I'd listen to my girlfriend over Hammond reciting security protocols. Some might claim here that Kendra is just playing off the fact that Isaac has a girlfriend, but she could have just said boyfriend, yet she didn't. There's little doubt that the speech here was meant as an LGBT virtue signal, and it's not an isolated instance. The remake has several instances of female NPCs discussing their girlfriends. The game also uses the they-them pronouns and a few text file entries to refer to individuals. Speaking of which, once aboard the USG Ishimura, you'll also discover that the ship has all gender bathrooms now. Yes, they literally call them that, 
And yes, they literally removed the men's and women's rooms, meaning there isn't one side where men can go and one side where women can go. Everybody uses the same toilets, sinks, showers, etc. With this in mind, the half-woman icon is kind of bizarre since it inadvertently implies that trans women aren't real women. As far as potential race swapping goes, well, the original game definitely had non-white characters in it. Hammond was always black, and there was always an Asian crew member on Isaac's prepare team. Looking closely at her model and original actress, Kendra was probably meant to be a mestiza Amerindian, although I do suspect many gamers thought she was white. But something you might also notice in the remake is that the developers swapped out a minor white character named Johnston for a black woman sporting one of those minority feminist fade haircuts. There's actually quite a few of these NPCs with this haircut now, although they're all dead. Killed by the evil monsters that inhabit the all gender bathrooms. If you paid attention in the original game to all the posters and magazines, then you may have noticed that the majority depict white people, most of them attractive. In the remake, however, there's been some more design changes. All the Peng posters, for example, that had sexy females have been removed and replaced with bland graphics. Generally speaking, any poster or magazine with boobs or sexy females on it has been removed. One of the early levels in the original game had a giant banner of a white man on it. Now that same banner has a giant black female. The original Welcome Aboard poster in the Ishimura lobby had a white man standing front and center with an attractive white female at his side. Now there's a skinny black woman front and center next to an Indian man. This is actually also part of a welcome video you can see before entering the Ishimura security station, which somehow now doubles as an immigration intake office. This makes zero sense whatsoever. The Ishimura is not a country, it's a mining vessel. Moreover, in the Dead Space universe, Earth actually has a unified government. The artwork in the hydroponics lab now has a carefully curated amount of diversity, whereas before, there was just a white farmer Joe on all the food crop posters. Of course, the developers did have the good sense not to place the black female on the watermelon section and instead opted to put her on the tomatoes. There's also some communist graffiti on the walls. One instance in what looks like a woman's handwriting says, fuck this ship, it's a shitty capitalist organization. Amusingly, the graffiti is right next to a big corporate diversity poster. So yeah, I'd have to agree. This is a shitty capitalist organization. Although I'm sure the artist doesn't exactly share my rationale. That is, I doubt the artist in question believes that the CEC's diversity and inclusion policy is shitty. The funny thing is that the CEC would probably hire this artist to work in their PR department. I also wouldn't be surprised if this graffiti artist was the same person who redesigned this other CEC poster that swapped out a white man for a black guy and removed the white woman's breasts. Perhaps now is a good time to talk about unitology, the new age religion in dead space. As the wiki states, quote, in unitology belief, God is apparently seen as the alien intelligence or agency that created the marker in humanity, and it was a force that would regather humanity and make it one in the process of convergence. Death is central to unitology. Unitologists believe that all living beings will intertwine in the manner of the two prongs of the marker to become one. They call this process convergence and believe that it will alleviate all of the destructive materialistic problems of the human race." Unquote. The marker is a strange relic that the crew of the Ishimura found on planet Aegis 7. It's what's responsible for turning everyone into weird monsters. Basically, it kills them and then turns their dead bodies into necromorphs. But the unitologists think that this is part of their transformation and rebirth. The marker is also connected to a giant hive mind on Aegis 7, so the Unitologists also think that this is their path to convergence. Now, I'm not going to go too deep on this, but Unitology really does sound comically similar to transhumanist globalism, or maybe even Tikkun Olam with its concept of broken divine shards that must be made whole again. Isaac, make us whole again. Sure, people like Yuval Harari at the World Economic Forum aren't exactly running around ranting about an alien marker, but they do see humans as data collection pawns for elites who will cheat death by uploading their personalities into an AI-based metaverse. In the end, they also see humanity literally dying out and being reborn as something else. 
We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens, because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. All of life, for four billion years, dinosaurs, amoebas, tomatoes, humans, all of life was subject to the laws of natural selection and to the laws of organic biochemistry. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds. The IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. And at the same time, science may enable life after being confined to, for four billion years to the limited realm of organic compounds, science may ena enable life to break out into the inorganic realm. Join me as I gaze upon the face of God. <laughs> Now, I doubt the original developers of Dead Space saw unitology as a proxy for globalism. In fact, they probably had zero issue with the idea of a single Earth government, since pretty much every science fiction IP since Star Trek just assumes this will be the case, and often celebrates it. The original developers were probably going for some kind of analog to Scientology, alongside elements of a capitalist dystopia. Consider here all the fake meat posters everywhere. In the original Dead Space, these weren't a virtue signal, but rather a dark sign of dwindling resources. And that's what's remarkable about the diversity and inclusion additions in the remake. They've been inserted into this dystopian subtext. All in all, these changes to the Dead Space remake are somewhat minor. I imagine a lot of people won't even notice them, and might even think I'm being a bit fanatical for focusing on them. But these changes are a pretty good example of how leftist activists eventually co-opt and dominate everything. They start out with something small and then build on it, often citing afterwards how the lore supports the drastic changes. Take for example how Neil Druckmann recently took a minor hint in The Last of Us Part 1 that the character Bill may have been gay, and then made a full 80 minute episode for the HBO series about Bill having gay sex with his lover in their private compound as the world around them burned. I suspect that if Dead Space 2 gets a remake, the changes will be much more drastic and undeniable. <laughs> 